And a good sunny midday to you, Roger Hill, Velka Weather Hazards forecaster, Velka Weather Hazards outlook. What we're looking at is, of course, the uh, large scale picture here with uh, we have an area of higher pressure south of Hudson Bay. This eventually is uh, going to work its way uh, into the Great Lakes and then kind of across uh, parts of New England, south adjacent southeastern Canada and into the Canadian Maritimes. And that's going to afford us some pretty nice weather here over the course of the next uh, a couple, three days. However, we do have a cold front that's going to be forming behind this area of higher pressure. And that's going to track through and bring us a little bit of a shower and thunderstorm activity. The thunderstorms look relatively benign. There is a little bit of shear associated with it right now, but it doesn't look to be a big deal. But it's something we'll have to watch. And that would be the only potential uh, impacts to utilities would be probably fairly benign thunderstorms working in somewhere along about Wednesday afternoon. Behind that, temperatures aloft will be cold enough to support a few wet snowflakes in some of the higher terrain of mostly Essex County, maybe parts of Orleans County. Uh, that's the way it looks right now. Of course, things can change as uh, the models have a tendency to be a little bit more in flux, but there there is a little bit of uh, uh, some indications that the modeling is not handling things after that Wednesday night period very well. So there is the possibility of a few light showers or sprinkles kind of lingering Thursday into Friday. And it does look like we have a potential weather regime change that might take place this over this coming weekend, where instead of having these weather systems come at us uh, with areas of higher pressure uh, from the north and west, kind of a dry source region, if you will, something uh, could change and work some of this up the coast. You can see some of these systems are already starting to do that as they work up the eastern seaboard. The other thing that's kind of interesting what, is, what has happened is uh, we had a, an impulse that kind of worked up with a ton of moisture, and this was a subtropical moisture at that, and dropped some pretty good rainfall across the very southern parts of Vermont, but mostly into New Hampshire and Maine, greater than two inch amounts. Boy, oh boy, I wish we could have had that here in the state of Vermont. We really need a soaker. Doesn't look like we're going to get it. In fact, it looks fairly puny in terms of what shower and thunderstorm will roll through on Wednesday afternoon. Let's uh, check the latest uh, computer modeling. On the right-hand side today at 18Z, this is valid at 2 o'clock. We have the GFS. Left-hand side, we have the European model. They're in pretty good agreement. So, a little bit of sprinkles, a little bit of light rain showers indicated. This is a pretty small amount of additional rain showers, but right along the northern tier, a little bit into western parts of the state, Champlain Valley. Could see a couple sprinkles this afternoon on this Sunday afternoon. This is valid at uh, 5 o'clock, and that is uh, 8 o'clock, and you can see that the uh, showers are kind of lingering into that period, and then they fall apart. High pressure begins to build in, kind of north of the Great Lakes, and you'll see how that evolves. we got a couple of fairly nice days going uh, basically into Tuesday. Monday, spectacular, bright sunshine, blue skies. The area of higher pressure rolls off the coast and uh, starts to kind of uh, thin out a little bit, narrow out, and weaken. We have this cold front, and oh, look at that. We got snow. Temperature's cold enough for snow, but that's south of James Bay, Canada, and well north of the, even the Ottawa Valley. However, that gets closer. It does get a little bit warmer, and we're looking at what will be uh, a cold front that'll be uh, moving into slightly warmer air at that point, and that could promote a few thunderstorms, fairly benign. One or two could maybe get gusts potentially as high as thresholds, but right now it doesn't look like it's going to be a big deal. This would happen again. This is valid 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, and then that lingers uh, a little bit more into Wednesday night. You can see the shower activity, and then even some wet snowflakes into uh, Wednesday evening as it looks right now, and then that pushes away. We still have a little bit 5,400 meter uh, decimeter uh, shows that uh, the thicknesses support what could be some wet snowflakes even going into uh, Thursday morning. But for the most part, we're looking at some very light sprinkles, very light showers, not a big deal. Then that kind of dries out a little bit, and then it returns a little bit on Friday afternoon as we have some kind of a cold pull aloft. Eventually, this will become a little bit more unstable, but it doesn't look like we're going to see any uh, shower or thunderstorm activity out of it. Uh, as it looks right now, except for a couple sprinkles. And that's going to be about it. Now, the interesting thing is we, we're looking at that weather regime change. Again, we're going to see more of a flow coming in up the eastern seaboard, kind of uh, from the south-southwest. And you can see how this is going to be starting to move in and get captured by that upper, that leftover upper low. And so this is valid uh, uh, Saturday night 
for the next following weekend. So things look a lot more wetter, and this may be just what the doctor ordered here uh, toward the late part of May, where we could see some soaking rainfall and often on showers. But wet weather for next weekend, get ready for that. Looking at the uh, GFS plumes here, uh, the ensemble forecast, and this is a three hourly QPF, so we're looking at just a little bit of sprinkles again and dry weather, um, minor amounts of precipitation. The total amounts of uh, QPF look like this, not a big deal. We're talking three tenths of an inch total here with the, the business coming this mid part of the week. And again, we're not looking at a whole lot of rainfall for this particular period. Would like to show you 850 temperatures. We get close to freezing levels again at about uh, the top of Mount Mansfield. That's probably going to promote some frost. And indeed, uh, you can see that we might have some frosty temperatures here. It's more outlier. Uh, it's possible, not a certainty. But uh, also would like to show you that uh, 850 temperatures again. This would also promote a little bit of wet snowflake action along about Wednesday evening. Beyond that, wind looks like we get not really significant here. This is at 850 hectopascals, about the top of Mount Mansfield, and we're not looking at a tremendous amount of wind either. Precipitable water, a little bit of a shot upward here. This is with the cold front that's moving in for Wednesday afternoon. What about shear, or excuse me, what about convective available potential energy? That would be the day right there. And then lay, overlaying shear potentially around 40 knots. Eh, we'll have to wait and see. But one or two of those storms could get going uh, briefly with some gusty winds. And any impacts from thunderstorms uh, for the middle part of the week uh, will be issuing heads up uh, probably as early as Tuesday, probably Tuesday morning, looking further into Wednesday afternoon. Precipitation-wise through the period, we're not looking at a tremendous amount here, according to the Weather Prediction Center or the QPF for the next seven days, going through the 28th. So about a quarter of an inch up in the northern areas, and... We're kind of high and dry. And temperatures look like this. We're a little bit above normal currently right now, but some chillier air is beginning to slide in. The areas that are seeing well above normal temperatures are basically up in the areas where they're seeing a lot of wildfires. And that is basically from uh, eastern Alaska, parts of the Yukon, Nunavut, uh, and so on and so forth, Saskatchewan, Alberta. And this is where we're seeing a lot of smoke that's uh, occasionally drifting into the region. I would expect more of that smoke uh, incoming. Next five days of high temperatures, the meteorological output statistics, and weighted temperatures running about six to nine degrees below normal, but three days later, things become neutral. So we see a little bit of a warming up pattern. And you note the difference here. This little bit of a warming trend is going to expand. So all of that expands from uh, the northern plains and, again, the wildfire areas up here. And I want to show you that wildfire up here. This is uh, the current uh, conditions. We do have, it looks like, a little bit of smoke that's uh, all the way down into, say, southern Idaho, Twin Falls, Boise, Billings, and so on. This is the code for smoke, and there's quite a bit of it. So these are the areas seeing the wildfires and we're starting to see that uh, off and on smoke layers drift into our neck of the woods here. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.